guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Crisis on Infinite Earth. So, right now, Crisis Part 5 is on, so I'm going to record that part later, but I'm recording Part 4, you know, the first half of my review right now, and we're going to probably combine it to be one whole video unless I change my mind as I'm editing this later, but Part 4 is finished, Part 5 is currently on right now, and... I'm recording this in between the breaks because I know this is going to be me talking for a long time so I thought I would use up the advert breaks to actually get into this and you know start talking about it because I just cannot stop talking about part four what the fuck happened we need to talk about that big thing first but obviously if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year Okay, so the big thing, we're going to skip the chronological stuff, we'll go back to the chronological stuff in a minute, but the big thing is, Barry Allen meets Barry Allen, and we're talking about Ezra Miller making a cameo on the Flash TV show, in Crisis, he's confirmed to be a part of the Arrowverse, you know, even though he disappeared, He's still confirmed. So, how on earth they made that happen, and you know, actually getting Ezra to film it, I have no idea how they did it, I thought the scene was very entertaining, but I think the biggest thing about the scene is how mind-blowing it is that the DC Extended Universe is a part of the Arrowverse now, or at least in that iteration where we saw, you know, Barry was sort of running through the Speed Force, he ran to this place, Star Labs, you know, the Flash doesn't call himself the Flash in the film, but I think this pretty much confirms that Ezra's still going to be the Flash in his own film and stuff like that. So I think it's just more kind of groundbreaking and it really blew my mind because it was a cameo that they teased. They teased that there was going to be a cameo that no one was expecting and this completely caught me off guard. And you know, this is sort of what Crisis is about. I think this is the cameo that really kind of is going to break everyone because no one was expecting it and I, I really enjoyed it and you know, it, it opens a lot of big questions about future crossovers and stuff. But anyway, let's go back to the start of part four. So roughly near the start, we have Oliver, he's the Spectre. So he explains to everyone, you know, why he's the Spectre, what he's done and why he's not, you know, our version of Oliver, although he's very consciously inside of him himself and, you know, he's doing everything with a purpose. And so we have the Anti-Monitor be revealed to be at the dawn of time and they must go to this Maltus planet or something like that, they called it. But anyway, where Manu Vo is from, and they essentially need to find a way to get to a breach that the Antimatter universe was created out of. And, you know, the Antimonitor was therefore created as well at the same point due to an experiment with Manu Vo and his wife. And Manu Vo is a scientist. He didn't have any powers or anything prior to that event. And, you know, he basically caused the start of Crisis and it's, you know, his fault. So then we move on, we have Barry returning, he's been missing for months, he's been stuck in the Speed Force, and it seemed like, you know, a few seconds to him or a few minutes or something like that, but for everyone else they've been stuck, you know, in that same place for, you know, a few months, and it's, you know, obviously the difference in him returning, and he sort of reveals to everyone, oh shit, you know, it's only been a few minutes for me or something like that, so. Yeah, we have Barry, and then we have Oliver, obviously as the Spectre, and so Oliver sort of talks to Barry, and he's like, run Barry, run, and I got chills, and it was just a really, really great moment, because, you know, it sort of called back to everything prior, but also at the same time you have, you know, his new mission, he has to run through the Speed Force, Oliver's gonna help him, and he's gonna unlock his potential. So Kara, Ryan and Lex, they arrive on the Monitor's Earth and, well not Earth, but different planet. And so it's there, you know, they make a comment about how it looks like Earth, how it looks like a normal forest, because obviously they filmed it in a normal forest, but it's colour graded so a lot of the lighting is purple. Seems to be like, you know, there's purple light radiating everywhere. And so we go back to Barry, and Barry is running through the Speed Force, and we get flashes of the Anti-Monitor, and basically what happened is the Anti-Monitor attacked everyone, and everyone was split into different places as Barry ran throughout the Speed Force. You know, that was the perspective of what we saw. So we saw Barry from Season 1 in his sort of old clothes. You hear the dialogue, 
and then you get this version of Oliver Queen, uh, Queen Consolidated, and then you see Oliver using the memories, as he explains, to save them all. And so by doing this, you get different iterations of past events where we see different characters. You know, it's slightly off because you can tell it's kind of a bit different, like Kara with Oliver in the Invasion crossover. Melissa still has her bangs, so you can tell the difference there. Oliver's hair is obviously a little bit different, but you know, he's got the same suit. So stuff like that happens with the anti-monitor causing that, and so the speed force is all in his memories. And so that's why you had the black bars, it's a bit different. I think the black bars is mainly for the Flash crossing over with the DC Universe because maybe that's just the way they shot it. And also in the scenes, I felt like they were going for a particular mood because the bottom half of the screen was mostly out of focus and then you have the top half of the screen of the image actually in focus. So it was obviously a stylized choice and I, I think I liked it. And so you at the same time you have Lex returning after he's gone missing and Supergirl still has obviously her massive thing against Lex, Lex betrays them all and he essentially goes to Manu Vo to try and bargain with him to change time to you know benefit for himself but also save the universe and the multiverse because he needs it to thrive if he dies he can't do anything okay so then we move on we have Batwoman she's at Palmer Tech and Oliver is there, Ray's there some stuff happens there, Barry eventually comes and gets them out. We have also, like I said, the return to invasion. Kara has her old costume, but she has her new hair. So it's different versions of Oliver's memory. Martian Manhunter seems to be an anchoring point as well throughout, you know, this episode and going into part five as well, because, you know, his powers is able to bring back the memories to people who haven't or don't remember what happened in Crisis, as saw with Ray in part 5 which we'll get to once we finish part 5 and so also at the same time we have another flashback to Elseworlds and so Barry's there when he wasn't actually there for the crossover at that specific moment last year so he sees Oliver, Oliver realises what's happened and everything like that so you know you get the explanations all there and then just going on past that we see Sarah, she awakens we get you know the monitor again with Lex and so Lex drops the line I'm here to make you an offer, I won't let you refuse, obviously a reference to the Godfather. I'm gonna make an offer that you can't refuse, famous line right there, so he sort of riffs on that. He also references the Brave and the Bold, thought I'd reference some of these comic book sort of easter eggs. Also Marv Wolfen shows up in the next episode, which we'll get to in a minute, but basically, so you have all that stuff going on with Lex, he makes a deal, you have at the same time John and Laurel you can tell that they're a bit older you know that they've shot this new footage recently and so they're with Barry Barry shows up they don't know who Barry is or well basically they don't know who the Flash is but Sarah awakens and she was just dead we kind of all suspected that that was a new shot so they did recreate all of this and so you have that all happening with Sarah coming back and then everyone's sort of awakened Back to Kara and Oliver with Jean in Invasion. Supergirl storms in to stop Lex in sort of real time, in the real version of Supergirl. And so Lex has new powers, they start fighting, it's a really good fight. And I really like the speeches that they used against each other. And then at that same time, Ryan Choi is talking to the monitor, he seems to get through to him, but it didn't work in the end. But anyway, I have to cut in right now because part 5 just ended. And there is some massive moments. I don't care about chronological sort of talking about it anymore because Crisis has finished. And now we're going to include part 5 as well as part 4 and we'll go over everything together. Obviously the stuff I haven't completely finished with part 4 is going to be right here. But I gotta talk about this because obviously you have the final showdown. The Anti-Monitor is actually defeated after he returns. To be honest, I think the Anti-Monitor was a little bit of a letdown, but that being said, this crossover was fucking amazing, especially how it ended with Oliver and his speech. He does the voice overlay, Oliver's still dead, they all sort of pay homage to him after this, and they're at, you know, the new Hall of Justice, which we'll talk about in a second, but the thing we have to talk about that I totally freaked out over just now is that when he's doing that speech, the voice overlay is happening, 
and you have all the characters there, but you get to see the multiverse as it returns, and you get to go to all these different Earths, and who do you fucking see? You see Stargirl. Stargirl's confirmed. You see the Green Lanterns on Earth 12. That bit got me freaking the fuck out. Green Lanterns are confirmed. That is the most exciting thing about this crossover, in my opinion, seeing that the Green Lanterns are confirmed to exist on Earth 12, and, you know, we have Swamp Thing next, what? Swamp Thing's in it? And then we have Titans, we saw them earlier, but seeing them again, then we have Doom Patrol, what? And then we have Superman Brandon Ralph's version, what? What is happening? I was literally freaking out, and I'm still freaking out, as you can tell by the tone of my voice. I love the ending of the crossover, I thought the ending was so fitting, and then it ends with Earth Prime, like in the comics. It's not Earth 1 anymore, it's Earth Prime, because you've got all these Earths that have been merged, well mainly Earth 38 and Earth 1, now we end it off with Earth Prime. Oh my god. Seriously, like, chills were running up my spine like no other in that montage, and you know, Green Lanterns confirmed, Stargirl confirmed, Swamp Thing, Titans, Doom Patrol, Superman Brandon Ralph's version, not the Kingdom Come version we saw earlier in the crossover, and Earth Prime, and then we go on to form the fucking Justice League. The Justice League is a real thing, there are the Star Labs facility that we theorised many seasons ago when they first showed it in the Invasion crossover, that would be the Hall of Justice for the Justice League, and now the Justice League is official, Barry reveals the table at the end of the crossover, and it's a proper Justice League table, and what the hell, freak out, let me know what do you think about all of this in the comments, we're going to continue talking about that, but that was the ending, I had to talk about that, I had to cut it in because it's completely on my mind right now, and then you have the ending with the laughter and the name tag that says Gleek, at first, when it said Gleek, I was like, Darren Chris? What? I was thinking of Glee. I was thinking because the Glee fans called themselves Gleeks. I was like, is there Glee in the crossover? Is there Glee that has been confirmed to be part of the multiverse? But then I searched up, did my research, and it turns out Gleek is actually a monkey, which makes sense because that was the laughter, sounded like a monkey. In the comics, who's a blue alien monkey, and he's a pet of the Wonder Twins, so this is a character who has appeared in the comics and has appeared in different iterations of TV shows, so yeah, that's who it is, it's not to do with Glee, so don't freak out about that like I was freaking out because I was like, what, Music Meister's coming back or, you know, <laughs> a Glee crossover, that would be fucking amazing, but anyway, let's move back and talk about some other stuff in part 4, then we'll go back to part 5 and talk about it. So you have all of this happening, you've obviously, like I said, you had The Flash, Ezra Miller meeting Barry, and then later on in the episode you have Oliver versus the Anti-Monitor as they're at the dawn of time, and you know, you get these really great moments where you have the fight scenes with the Paragon and Kara in the scene is like, let's do this, and I got chills, there's many parts throughout part 4 and part 5 where it was proper fanboy out moments which is just amazing and I think it really did serve on that front but like I said I don't think the anti-monitor was as powerful I think he was really powerful in part 4 but then in part 5 he seemed to be kind of weak because they destroyed him pretty damn easily even when he turned massive he was pretty damn easy for them to defeat using just one device to shrink him and destroy him and yeah so you have all of that happening in part 4 Paragons line up, they're like, let's do this, Oliver saves the multiverse, and this is where we head to the end of part four, because Oliver talks about how it's almost time, you look up in the air, he's created the spark of light, and that's actually the universe, the multiverse being recreated and reborn, but Oliver is dead again, and you get this really touching moment with Barry, and also Sarah, but especially Barry, I think Grant's doing an excellent job here, as well as Stephen and Katie Lotz. Her emotions really let fly, and obviously this is the Arrow episode, so it was a very fitting end to that. Let's move on to the Legends of Tomorrow episode, part 5. So, at the start, the new universe is created, we return to Earth-38, or as we suppose it is, and we have Alex with Kara, and she's in her normal clothes. 
so there's a white Martian attack, I for a second thought that it was the white Martian attack in season 2, I was like, is mon going to pop up? What? But it turns out, wasn't that. So a little bit disappointed by that, but that's just me getting my hopes up. And so Nia returns, you have Lex winning the Nobel Peace Prize, so history has been manipulated, things have changed. And so we're at the DEO, it's now owned by Lex, seems like Lena's friends with Supergirl again, and so it seems like they've retconned some of the stuff they've done in the past, and this is a way to keep Lex in the show, and I think Lex is going to stick around in the show, it seems like that is the path that they've created. And so, yeah, he's the new owner, there's massive changes, and then Kara's like, I need to punch something. There is an attack in, like, downtown National City, and so it's Weather Witch, but Weather Witch is from The Flash. She's from Earth-1, so why the hell is she showing up on Earth-38, as we suppose? But then Barry speeds in, you have this Marv Wolfman cameo that I mentioned earlier, the guy that wrote Crisis in the comics, so that was a very nice moment, and he reveals that Earth-1 and Earth-38 have joined together, and that's why they're on the same Earth, that's why they've got the same villains, so, you know, that is the big thing. Earth Prime is happening right now, because that is the new Earth. And so at the same time as all of this happening with Barry and Kara, it's great seeing them team up. You have Harrison Wells who returns, obviously Nash Wells, he survived, Sarah arrives back, gets some flashbacks of what happened in part 4, Sarah meets an oblivious Ray, Jean shows up, helps Ray out, and then Supergirl's Earth is no more, it's part of this, and the worlds have combined, only the Paragons know what happened to Crisis, but then Jean goes around trying to put it back in people's minds. So, you know, there is no massive trauma for the American people, as they say, because, you know, it's mainly about America because these American heroes. And so, you know, then we get some nice moments with the Arrow characters where, you know, John talks about how he hasn't been there every time Oliver has died, which is a bit strange again, because I think John should be there, but whatever. Anyway, so Caitlin's back, we have John paying her a visit as well, so we have John versus Nash Wells, he really holds nothing back against him, so everyone is reunited apart from Oliver, so everyone has survived the crisis, barring just one person, as I sort of suspected, and then we get the return of Bebo, which was kind of funny, and I have to say, the first part of part 5 is very sort of Legends-like, very comedic, but then it sort of kicks into gear when it gets into the seriousness and the stakes sort of really turn up as, you know, you have Nash returning with the arrow lot, Crisis is starting up all over again as he reveals, so Barry and Sarah have this really nice talk, they sort of talk about Oliver and different stuff like that, but then they get attacked by the Shadow Demons, and so they have to, you know, help out the other Paragons, that being mainly Ryan Troy, due to the fact he doesn't have any powers or anything, but anyway, so yeah, the Antimonis is alive, he's back, and he is, you know, looking for the Paragons to try and destroy them, essentially. And so we have Sarah talking to the whole crew. She says, Bat Lady. I thought that was just a funny line that I would mention, you know, instead of Batwoman. And so it's more serious. The threat is real. Justice League slow-mo walk was so cool. I really liked that. And so they go to fight these Shadow Demons once again. And they disappear as the Anti-Monitor shows up and sort of absorbs them. Whilst at the same time you have the return of Black Lightning, he's sort of big in the last part of the crossover. And then as the battle begins with the Anti-Monitor, they all shout for Oliver, which we saw in some behind the scenes looks from Canada Graphs. And so the battle begins and the Anti-Monitor grows to a massive size, like properly in the comics. Well, he's a bit bigger in the comics, but it was a nice homage. Although I have to say, like I said earlier, He's not very powerful, and he is quite easily defeated, but, you know, you have all of that. The battle ends, they destroy him by using Ray's device, and, you know, Superman's small, they get him back. And then we go towards the ending, which we talked about just prior, so Crisis has ended, and in the end there was only one. Oliver says that in the voice overlay with, you know, Stargirl, Green Lantern, Swamp Thing, Titans, Doom Patrol, Superman... Brandon Ralph, and then you have Earth Prime, the big reveal, so all of that happens, so yeah, wow, Crisis has finished, that was part 4 and part 5, hopefully you enjoyed this video, this has been one long ass video, it's over 20 minutes long, because I had to talk about it, 
and you know i want to say a massive thank you to all of you who have stuck with me throughout crisis and if you are new to the channel because of crisis and because of this video please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any dc tv videos later this year because we make videos daily so i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.